All right, welcome to the July 19th, 2023 Aries Working Group call. We've got a full agenda uh, marketing update um, from Alex and Helen. Um, overview of Aries VCX is the highlight today. We've got uh, the team here, Patrick, has joining us um, to give an overview of Aries VCX, where a ton has been happening lately. Lots and lots of stuff going on. Um, and then if we have time, we'll have a, a status of the SDK uh, discussion at the at the end. And again, only if we have time for that one. Um, reminder that this is a Linux Foundation and Hyperledger Foundation meeting. So the uh, Linux antitrust policy is in effect, which is on your screen. And the Hyperledger Code of Conduct is in effect. Let's be good to one another. Um, feel free to join the attendees list. Uh, I put the um, uh, a link to this page into the chat. If you jump in, um, please add your name to, um, to the attendees list. Is there anyone new to the meeting? Um, we, uh, if you are new, we welcome people to step up to the microphone and sort of say why you're here and and uh, what your interest is in, and how we can help you get oriented in the Aries community. No takers on that. All right. Um, as far as announcements, um, if anyone has announcements, I'm going to start with um, Akapai. We've got a uh, release 090 pending. We've got one more PR to go into that. It will have uh, a new release of CredX, which has uh, is the Anon Creds um, update, which has some performance improvements and some fixes in the Anon Creds and CL Signature libraries. That's the big thing going into that. Um, but there's a, a number of other things, including we're moving to Python 3.9 with this release. Um, so the base will all be 3.9 in the um, in the various um, images and so on that are released. So that's the news happening in Akapai. Uh, any other announcements from any of the other groups? All right, uh, Alex, you've got the mic. Do you want me to? Do you want to share? Yeah, I'll just share. Thank you. Okay, folks. Um, five minutes. Um, because we got a busy meeting. I want to give an update on two things that Helen and I have been working on. Um, a survey we sent around that many of you may have seen about um Aries comms, and then uh, an update description of what Aries is that we want to put onto the wiki as a starting point, ASAP. So rather than go into great detail, I'm gonna go through them briefly right now, share them on the screen, but both links are in the meeting notes. So please review them at your leisure. They should be very in line with what we've been discussing the last few weeks, there's no surprises. So on that basis, what I'd like to propose is that we'll give it a couple of days for people to digest and follow up if they need to. Otherwise, we can do an update to the wiki landing page with a new description on the basis that we can always iterate it and make it better going forwards. So it's not set in stone. It's just much better than what we've got right now. Sooner the better. Yes. So on that basis, I'll just go through this briefly. Um, there's a presentation. The link again is in the slide notes, in the uh, meeting notes. Uh, we got 16 responses from the survey we put together. We, pub we publicized on the Hyperledger Discord. I'm um, here in the working group within a few organizations as well. And the summary of the results is mostly in line. Uh, you can go into these, detail these questions at your own time, but mostly in line with what we thought before with a couple of interesting insights. People didn't really care about Aries being front and center saying it, it don't require blockchain. That wasn't important to people, both on the dev and exec side. And there wasn't massively strong support for being shouting from the rooftops about creating wallets and agents being the thing you have to say upfront. Of course, you can do that, but it's not as important as we thought it might have been. The rest of them are pretty much in line with what we thought, like privacy preserving everything else. These are the business results, and these are the developer results on the next slide. So you can even look at those as you wish. We got some great suggestions of other things you might want to mention in our description from government level identity and KYC, fed crypto well, cryptography status and whether it's fed and so forth, conformity to standards. So there's some great recommendations from people. And we also got a big laundry list of starting materials. 
lots of courses, repos, videos that we're going to put into that wiki page as well as starting points, people coming to this fresh. And here, along with, along, line with what Stephen just said, the sooner we can get update the Hyperledger pages by Aries, the better. And we're going to update that when we can, because they're doing a slight refresh now, and we're also going to update the um, readme file for the main Aries GitHub page as well. So with that said, again, I'll just give you a quick summary. We've got these two descriptions in the other document that links also in the meeting notes. Um, in line with those survey results, this is building on the draft we had before and with a few changes and a bit more scannable and a few things deprioritized to make it clearer. So on the first page is, an, is a sort of general overview, and this is the one that will for, probably form the basis of the wiki page. And then probably to be adapted for the Hyperledger area, for the Hyperledger site, is this higher level, more exec focus with less terminology. And we can have this in our back pocket for future uses anyway, um, but there's this version as well, which is the same as the top one, but less techie. Nice. That reaches my time slot, but yeah, go ahead, Stephen, and welcome any initial thoughts right now. This looks great. Yeah, I think we got a good starting point. And again, I would suggest if anyone's got concerns about prioritization, what I'd like to recommend is that let's get this up. I mean, if you feel it's a showstopper, please say, because this is a community effort. But what I'd suggest is let's get something improved. And if we need to iterate it, by all means, reach out to Helen or myself. Our email addresses are on the meeting notes. I'll also chime in here that we uh, I'm still putting together the list of links that folks sent, um, which is fantastic. There we probably got uh, at least have a couple dozen at least. Um, but if there are any links to white papers, reports, blogs, um, you know, your company have, might have a podcast or a whatever. Anyways, any any type of links that you think are helpful and beneficial to new folks in um, that that approach Aries, um, please send them my way because we would love to have a, a you know a, a quasi comprehensive thriving list of community sourced um, uh, places for people to read more and learn more and see the the growth of the community. Absolutely. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Patrick, for a short inter interjection there. And um, any feedback, send it our way. Much appreciated. Do. All right. If no one has any other comments, let's go to um, Aries VCX. Let's get an introduction to that for those that haven't looked at it in a while and learn about it and hear from the team. So over to you, Patrick. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'll uh, share my screen and uh, prepared some uh, sort of improvised presentation. I like to use draw IO, so I just sketch something together. All right. It's very flexible. All right, uh, let me maybe turn on the camera for now. Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, my name is Patrick Stash. I'm one of the maintainers of maintainers of Aries VCX, and uh, I came came here. We, uh, me, and the team came here today uh, to talk a little bit about, uh, uh, you know, what it is, uh, who we are, and why we are doing what we're doing. Um, so uh, starting with some general info, then we'll go into a uh, component overview from mainly from perspective of where we are currently and uh, where we are going and maybe where we've been before. Um, so that kind of should give you an idea of the trajectory of the project, not only the, the you know, st status quo at the moment, but also where we are headed from where. And uh, so I'll talk, about, talk a bit about the components we have deprecated, uh, components which are sort of stable, new components we created from the scratch and, and, and the stuff we are planning to do. Uh, so some uh, some more intro here. So first like elementary question, what is actually Aries VCX? So, um, so the general approach we or like philosophy we, uh, we take uh, is that we already consider ourselves as a, a library rather than framework. So it's not that kind of a batteries included approach. Um, but ready, rather we are trying to uh, provide the building blocks for creating Aries and also non-Aries applications. So we have a sort of a 
um, obviously the kind of first class citizen right now is uh, the, the library itself implementing the Aries protocols, but also <clears throat> the repository contains a lot more. It's also a set of uh, Aries agnostic uh, supporting components written in Rust, like did resolver, did parser, uh, etc. This is a project maintained by uh, three people uh, representing APSA, which is South African Bank, uh, me included, and uh, George Mulhern uh, and as an independent contributor. Uh, we, have, we have him on a call right now as well. We, we have everyone on the call, I believe. Um, so, uh, and then maybe the question is why are we here now? Suddenly, uh, we've been kind of working in the shadows for a long time. Didn't really engage a lot with the uh, community. Uh, didn't join these calls um, uh, much. Uh, so uh, one of the reasons just just from the nature of, uh, I guess, evolution of the library and experience of ourselves as developers as well. So some of you might know that uh, the the project was forked originally from something called libvcx which was part of libvnd uh, developed by evernim and uh, just from nature of like having different philosophy before different priorities uh, given what we are we are trying to achieve uh, we considered you know th th there was a, there was some amount of uh, technical depth inheritance um just um so so we had to do like a bunch of cleaning and try, trying to trim it into our you know our kind of uh shape we wanted to have uh so for a long time uh we didn't really feel confident to like invite people and engage like widely because there was lots of uh you know our own work we felt like we need to do first um, it was also difficult to onboard people. The setup to get the whole thing running was quite difficult. And uh, maybe for, for some time in the past, we didn't even have like clear understanding of our identity, like who are actually who we actually are, like our framework. Should we try to build things conveniently, batteries included kind of way? Should are we, are we trying to build an agent eventually? You know, we, we were not sure what we are, and uh, this kind of shaped over time, and we understood that uh, we are building, as I mentioned before, rather like components and library than like uh, uh, agent or uh, or framework even. So, and also additionally, uh, we are looking to kind of start, just in general, we would like to engage more uh, widely with the community, perhaps uh, have more contribution outside of, of Aries VCX repo. And also, uh, given you know, gi given the previous points, uh, we feel more confident welcoming new contributors uh, who would like to you know work with us and and uh, and create something. There's uh, there's plenty of work. Uh, so now, uh, I will move to the component overview. But I just thought maybe it's a good idea to uh, stop for a second and just like give a space for a short. Uh, uh, I don't know if there's any questions, although there will be time for Q&A afterwards. So, but anyway, if there's any comments or thoughts before I move on, now it's time. Now is the time. Um, I'll ask one quick question. Um, the series of agnostic supporting Rust components, do you see it as a good idea that things like the did resolver, a did parser um, would, would be useful to use in other um, Aries frameworks. So uh, yeah. should we be looking at replacing a did resolver at Akapai, say, with the did resolver component that you have? I, I believe uh, it would be a good idea. That's, uh, that's eventually our goal to basically, you know, not only build uh, like Aries library, but uh, there's lots of stuff which is like the did resolver, right? Which is really independent from Aries and can be just generally used anywhere. So exactly. it, would yeah. be, it would be a pity not to try to modularize it. So that's what we did. And well, if, you know, if somebody uses it, we'll be more than happy because then more people will be incentivized to make it awesome and great and reliable and safe. So, yeah. you know, uh, it, it would be amazing if, uh, if, if the 
as I mentioned the last point, if there's new contributors who decide to, let's say, even just reuse some components, and then we would have, you know, a reason to work together. So that would be great. Okay. Thank you. Mm. Any any other thoughts or comments? Yes, I have a question, Patrick. Uh, Alberto here. Uh, we've been speaking uh, for a couple of weeks on the Discord channel. I uh, just one generic question here, and I have some follow up questions, but we can wait until the end. Mm -hmm. um, uh, why Rust? What are the advantages of uh, this uh, programming language? And what would you tell someone uh, who's thinking about maybe going down this route, of learning Rust to get into the into the space of contributing into areas VCX? What right. would you tell that person? Yeah. Yeah, so so historically, like we had just like a reasons to go with libvcx and improve it over time, but but now like a uh, you know ad I guess additional reasons like uh, emerge for us or like strengthen our convictions mainly the ease to integrate with other Rust components, given that uh, most of the Aries you know basic components are written in Rust. We find that it. It makes sense and it's easier and safer to just uh, you know stay in the same ecosystem, use the advantage of all the typing and and all the good stuff uh, done in this uh, you know uh, core core libraries. Um, and well, in general, you know uh, like the, the typically pitched uh, like Rust advantages about the safety typing and like uh, you know uh, costless abstractions. Um, but, but we find it like, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it, it has also advantages to stay in the ecosystem and basically implementing Aries in Rust, we can, uh, propagate the advantage to possibly other applications, um, whether it's, uh, you know, mobile or, or whatever Rust, inf you know, Aries infrastructure you want to build, issuer, verifier, mediator, we are giving that option to stay in that ecosystem, you know, not having to re-implement Aries, like it's there. So now it's possible to actually build issuer, verifier, mediator, or whatever else, you know, from these Rust components. So we, we like to consume this this these components natively and we kind of want to propagate these advantages further to other applications and, and see see it thriving. Okay. Thank you. All right, I'll I'll move uh, move on, and uh, we can get back to uh, some questions at the end. So I basically have only one more slide uh, left, which is the component overview. Um, maximize this maybe. All right, that's better. All right, so this can go away. So here I wrote I draw like a kind of high level overview of all of the components, like a really holistic overview of the repo, uh, maybe even too detailed and detailed in some parts, but I find this those important. So for the like uh, you know coloring uh, schema, uh, so there's like the red ones are deprecated, blue one are somewhat stable. Uh, doesn't mean there's no changes, but I don't know they've been around for a long time and maybe there wasn't so many changes recently. Uh, and then we have like new components, green, which are pretty much written from scratch, like really new, new greenfield components. Then we have yellow, which is in progress. Uh, there's a few of them. Uh, and then orange is kind of on the roadmap, you know, or something we are thinking about or possibly planning or hoping that somebody else might do it maybe. So uh, let's let's dive into it. So I'll start with like the the main part, the core components, where we have you know the Aries VCX crate itself. So this is for us kind of a first class citizen. This is the integration layer of all sub components we have, and it's a main building block for an and you know a third party application which wants to use Aries protocols uh, for something. Uh, and so this is purely Rust. So you would consume Aries VCX from another Rust project. Um, 
RSVC itself, uh, it's as you see, it's using like a number of subcomponents. There's some deprecated did doc, uh, but we have a whole bunch of new uh, crates actually uh, written from scratch. So we rewritten our uh, like uh, every messages data models from scratch. We have recently uh, wrote uh, a DID resolver, a D, you know, kind of a did doc data model and builder, you know, and all the stuff you might want to have to kind of work with uh, DID documents. And then some uh, some did methods we have did soft, did web, did peer. Hopefully, like uh, I don't know the state of did indie, but they'll be coming as soon as it's uh, possible to implement. Um, yeah, and then we have. Um, then we have, as you see, I split it out, Aries, VCX, trades kind of actually into two sections. So we have like a kind of an old person, uh, a stable, and then we are now in progress of uh, essentially rewriting our state machines in a better, uh, more testable and reliable way to make sure that are, you know, uh, there are, they, they don't really contain much, uh, like contain as little IO as possible. And we are starting now with the exchange protocol, actually, um, uh, with this approach. Um, so we'll be adding more, uh, you know, we'll be applying kind of, we are in a pioneering stage where we are kind of discovering how to write this every state machines in a better way. And so the, the first one is kind of the most difficult, just still learning. And uh, then we'll kind of reapply the same approach on all the other ones. Uh, then we have also, I would like to mention this whole a big green blob of components here, which is also written from scratch uh, recently. Uh, that's about uh, interfaces to uh, to the ledger. So we have like generic, like general interfaces for uh, simply reading and writing to like to writing unknown creds um, uh, structures and then separate interfaces which are specific to Indy. And then what I really like are the sub-components sub, sub underneath that. So that, for example, we have uh, like just transaction submitter interface, which can be implant for which we actually have, I believe, three different implementations. So we can submit your transactions using Indy VDR, or we can use LibIndy, or we can even use VDR proxy. So this is uh, uh, super cool when you want to actually run uh, you know, some kind of uh, issue, some kind of issuer verifier service in cloud in restricted cloud environment where you might not be able to use uh, zero MQ because of security guys and stuff like that. Uh, so, um, so then in that case, you can you can use VDR proxy to kind of offload you know that uh, burden of uh, dealing with zero MQ, uh, you know, from your issuer verifier uh, service and you don't you don't have to deal with uh, with those security um, like uh, compliance you can kind of offload it somewhere else maybe to different VPC or something so I really like this one and then we also have uh, like uh, you know you can you can inject your own transaction caching uh, we have like separate signer for transactions which is Basically, only only you only need that if you are right if you are ever writing on the in the ledger, and some uh, response parser we cherry picked from uh, from um, actually uh, libindi, as uh, we found that uh, IndiVDR didn't have modeled like a data model for uh, uh, ledger responses, uh, so we found this uh, piece of uh, libindi pretty useful. Well. And underneath that, uh, we have like our the, the engine of this whole thing, uh, which is like the ledger implementation, unknown creds implementation, the wallet implementation. As you can see, we are now deprecating uh, VDR tools, uh, uh, aka libindi the uh, ledger client implementation. Same wise with unknown creds, we are deprecating uh, VDR tools implementation, VDR tools slash libindi implementation of unknown creds in favor of credx which we have just uh, implemented recently including migration from vdr tools to credx and now we are kind of uh, uh in progress uh, uh, slightly struggling to move on to unknown creds rs it's kind of one of our challenges at the moment 
And then with Wallet, uh, we are pretty actually pretty happy with uh, BDR tools, aka Libindi implementation of the Wallet, uh, which provides MySQL and SQLite uh, implementations. But uh, the plan kind of is this is an orange color, which stands for like roadmap or plant. Uh, we are definitely thinking of um, uh, uh, you know implementing the storage interface with with Oscar as well. And then I actually uh, move a, a layer up, which I skipped initially. I started from core components and went down to the to the underlying engine. But looking up, we also have uh, like FFI layer on top of that and some application layer. So for the uh, the FFI, historically uh, there was something called libvcx, and that used to be actually the main value proposition in the old times when when this code resided in in the sdk the libvcx provided a way for people to build mobile applications uh now that's being deprecated as uh the the, the approach itself how to do this ffi is kind of outdated at the moment and there are better alternatives to do this um so instead um we are and we are kind of in a prototyping like initial phases of uh, building alternative to libvcx so people will be able to build um, uh, mobile applications uh, using you know basically providing rsvcx apis to to java you know to android and ios so we have uh, we have started a hyperledger mentorship project which got approved and we have a mentee right now. We are mentoring, uh, working on a uni FFI based uh, wrapper around Aries VCX, which auto generates, uh, uh, which we will, which will be, uh, or is, um, auto generating uh, Kotlin and um, Swift uh, wrapper wrappers. So it should be a lot, a uh, lot easier to maintain and should be a lot more reliable, safer. All, all, all the good stuff. Now moving to the right side, uh, this is uh, this is, I mean, technically these two are equivalent. It's just like some these two boxes, FFI and applications. It's just some Rust libraries or applications which consume Aries VCX as a you know the kind of a main crate. And so, but the difference here is in the application section, I've put here projects which are. Uh, like natively in Rust and will stay in Rust. So we have uh, we have within the repo we have uh, something called Aries VCX agent, which is like really simple Aries agent library, making it, makes it a little bit easier to build an agent in Rust. It provides persistence and some some you know uh, like default processing of messages, uh, which you would like which is like likely desiring. Uh, like agent implementation. And then on top of that, we have implemented the back channel for Aries agent test harness, uh, which is like running. Uh, by the way, here I have like the latest result I found. This is the, you know, uh, VCX interop with the other frameworks. So we have uh, like decent coverage with uh, Akapai. Uh, we have uh, coverage with AFJ not full. Uh, I think some tests are like skipped or maybe something's failing. We'll have to take a look at that. Uh, we have obviously good coverage with ourselves. There's other frameworks uh, we don't have coverage, but they also don't have coverage with other ones. For example, the .NET or AFGGO, uh, they, they don't have uh, actually um, much coverage with the other frameworks either. So so we, we try to cover the kind of the main, we consider main ones, the Akapa and AFG at the moment, lots of big communities around these. Uh, so that's what we kind of care about the most right now in in terms of the interop. Um, and yeah, moving back to the other, moving forward to the uh, other applications here. So we have another mentorship project uh, we under, under Hyperledger, uh, which is uh, uh, Aries Mediator, you know, or Ditko Mediator. So it's uh, just like standard stuff, pickup protocol 2.0, you know, um, it's kind of experimental. I know there's uh, there's uh, uh, a talks on Discord about mediators, and uh, we are not very active there. Uh, just kind of trying stuff on our own right now. 
you know, and see where we get, I guess. Um, and uh, maybe, you know, we can, if we run into challenges or some like learnings, we, we can share that. But right, right now it's in a very initial stages. So we don't really have uh, like uh, much, much to share uh, yet. And then in an orange color as a kind of a planned or, you know, thought about at least is uh, some sort of enterprise issue verifier. Uh, you know, um, it seems like a natural evolution that uh, lo may, lots of people is interested in, uh, in, I would say, FFI. People who come into Aries VCX are often asking about, are often looking to build native applications. They're asking about LibVCX. We tell them that it's deprecated, that there's Uni FFI. You know, it's kind of a hard choice. It's kind of a difficult moment right now because like uh, this is deprecated and this is not yet mature so it's kind of you either build something kind of off your on your own or you contribute here or you just stay patient um but in terms of like on the other underside you know of the of the issue and verifier you know uh, given that uh, it's it's kind of a crucial service i would find it uh, as a as a natural evolution that uh, we want to get here and have you know take advantage of all the performance and uh, and the safety and typing in like uh, issue verifier landscape as well so yeah this is uh kind of <laughs> what it is what do we do and i guess uh i'll just leave space for discussion now or any questions that's an awesome overview that was <laughs> A lot. Um, one question came up. I had the same. Colton asked it as well. Um, in the did peer, um, have you been following the did peer three, and have you got support for did peer three in that? Um, yeah, we we have implemented did peer two and did peer three. Excellent. Okay, good. We catched up. If we are synced up with like the latest latest developments, I know there was like some edits in the RFC. Yeah, a couple of we edits might have to. Off. Yeah, yeah, we we might have to catch up on that, but we haven't yet actually integrated the did peer itself with the kind of the the state machines and the you know the the Aries yeah. kind of core component, and it's more of a plan to be part of the the new state machine and the did exchange protocol we are just implementing now. It should support did peer, so we'll definitely you know be careful there, uh, make sure that it's like ready once it's this once this kind of uh, turns green or blue. yeah hey ben, uh, I, I have a question mm -hmm. yeah uh in regards to unify um so these wrappers you mentioned with kotlin and swift uh so you're saying this this will expose the areas vcx uh api and engine and uh, what would you be able to do with those wrappers? Would you be able to, um, for example, um, uh, create like a wallet implementation on the on the mobile side? Yeah, be so it would be you would be able to do anything. I mean, the end goal it, it depends what we you know how, how how much this will be matured, what kind of how much integration it will have with Aries VCX, but. Technically, you can propagate all the APIs we have in the Aries VCX. We can propagate, you know, we can enable in those Kotlin and Swift wrappers. So you could be, you would be able to do anything in those, what you are able to do in Aries VCX, uh, like a Rust trade. All right, cool. Thanks. By the way, I, I believe that, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, if somebody more familiar, I, I believe that UniFi also um, generates Python bindings, but I'm not 100% sure about it. We, we mainly do it for the Kotlin and uh, Swift. That's the, kind of the main main goal, though. Hey, but I, Patrick, could I jump in real quick? Yeah, for sure. So on the UniFi, just a quick shameless plug, I've written some tutorials on how to use unify and what that means in relation to FFI. I put the link in the chat if you guys would like to take a look. Um, one of the things that I've also done, so unify natively supports Swift, Kotlin, Python, and Ruby. 
Um, I think it also does some other integration with C, C++, although that seems redundant. Um, one of the tutorials, the latest one I wrote, I needed to use a Rust library in Java. And so what I ended up doing was creating a Kotlin wrapper and then showing going through the process of how to create that and then importing that into Java. And so um, some other guys um, have done some work um, integrating with C sharp.net. Um, that's not part of my tutorials, but that's also out there. So all of this is 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 growing. But um, if you'd like to take a look at my tutorials, they're a real super simple way to to get started in that. Mm, that that sounds great. I think this can be a great help for for our mentee uh, working with the the Uni FFI. Thank, thanks for that. Mm -hmm. And actually, Patrick, on that note. Uh, Will this mentorship program be open again uh, to the community? And um... uh, so I think that uh, Hyperledger, oh, sorry, Hyperledger is organizing this uh, once a year. Uh, I don't know if they, and it's been happening for the past three or four years, I believe. So just just extrapolating based on that, I assume that there will be another one in a, in a year or so, but uh, until then, you know, uh, this this mentorship lasts until November, and then yeah, I I don't know what's the hyperledger plan for these mentorships in two thousand twenty four. Got it. Thank you. Understand that mentorship, uh, or sorry, that that uni f uni ffi, um, basically what you do is you define what the interface looks like, and then you can generate. And then it's just generated from a single source for all of the different things you want. Like you just say, oh, I'm going to do Python as well. Is that correct? Or is there got to be customizations when you do Python and other customizations when you do Kotlin? Yeah, pre precisely. I, I believe there's no need for uh, other uh, customizations, but uh, maybe Steve, Steve might know better. Yeah, that's uh, true. You When you create the language wrapper, once you've... You start with creating a UDL, which is kind of like web IDL, a uh, representation of the interface you want to create. And then it's a single single command line uh, command to create the, um, each individual language wrapper. So once you've created it for Python, let's say, you want to create it for Kotlin, it is literally one, one command line command to do that. Okay, so it's more you're, you're maintaining this I can't remember what you need this this definition and then and then just generating from there. Okay, good. Yes. Seems worth the effort. I've enjoyed it. So I'm a strong proponent. We I I looked at doing this without Unify a couple of years ago, taking um the Ascar library and porting it over and Nobody liked the FFI-based Swift implementation that we created because it felt to Swift developers like C, and Swift developers don't like that. Um, and so this makes it feel like the native language. Mo Mozilla has done some really good work on this one. And then the other comment I made um, in the chat, Patrick, is definitely as as you're um looking at that mediator project and if you're looking at supporting websockets definitely look at the work indicio has done and and contributed to aries in the aries socket doc repository I, I heard about that um but thanks for additional heads up i'll see how we can harness that and perhaps save ourselves some work with the uh, yeah, well. yeah and the other thing is i think this is the most active well i'm sure there's other stuff going on around socket doc but right now um yeah if you're doing mediator and you've got a project like this i think it would be worth taking a look at it all right thank you any other questions this has been a great summary that's that picture's awesome <laughs> thank you
Excellent. All right. Anything else you want to share? No, I think uh, I think that's it. That's all okay. I had. Thank you. Uh, I'll see about um, grabbing uh, the sections, the intro and the, the sections out of the recording. So you've got those as well. Um, I think it'll be, I suspect it'll be a YouTube. So it might be just um, links into the um, starting points, but I'll let you know when they start. Um, so you can use those for other purposes. Um, great presentation. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, 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 thanks for uh, space to, to talk about it. Okay. Um, as we talk about more general um, Aries things, we uh, definitely would love to have um, you folks, if you can make this time time slot, um, have you join in because obviously there's um, lots of things we can learn and, and share and make decisions about together. So that would be very helpful. Um, status of the NDK, ND SDK, basically, um, uh, I did a short presentation and I could probably um, bring it up again, but on the Indie contributors call yesterday, but talking about um, the need to deprecate um, lib indie, um, a lot of what we've been talking about today, or a lot about what Patrick mentioned is the transformation that BCX is, has done. Um, but we really need to um, more aggressively in the community um, deprecate and perhaps archive the Indy SDK repository. And so in the in the Indy project, we're talking about that. And I wanted to make sure the um, the um, Aries community knew about that and was taking steps to do it because um, it, it part of the work is is for the Aries frameworks and libraries to um, take into account, uh, you know, make it so that there's alternatives to you from using the uh, ND SDK. Um, but then there's the those that are using the frameworks and using the libraries to do that transition as well. And um, for anything new, um, nothing, you know, nothing new should be starting with libindy as the basis. Um, so if you're starting new with Aries projects, um, should definitely be on the non, uh, not using libindy. Um, for those that are using it, there are conversion and migration tools, and we're um, going to be highlighting those in the next little while to make sure um, as much as possible people are moving um, away from the uh, away from libindy and um, and over to the newer tools, the um, both more performant, more stable, and better maintained um, shared components or um, the, the tag that's used for all of them is just ASCAR based right now, but um, it, it, it encompasses both Indie VDR, which is the interface to Indy, um, ASCAR, which is the storage component, and then um, either CredX or Anoncreds, Hyperledger Anoncreds as the Anoncreds implementation. Um, those are the three components that make up the Indy SDK, and, and um, those are the new components that, that we're transitioning to. We just need to push that transition along. Um, I, I wanted to make that, get that word out there. Um, I don't know if anyone has any other follow-up or comments on that. I believe if you're using... VCX, um, AFJ, or Akapai, it's it's pretty easy to use the other tools um, instead of libindy. And, and as I say, definitely start doing that because we need to deprecate um, the Indy SDK. All right. Um, that's all I had. I guess we do have a little bit more time than I had expected. Um, Sorry for, for making you compress, Alex, your session. <laughs> Forgiven. All right. Thank you. Um, any other topics people want to raise? I see there's something in chat. Okay. A question from Daniel. Daniel, you want to jump on and ask? 
Sure. I was just as a follow up to the the unified discussion. Um, does it support generating like idiomatic async in the wrappers that it generates? Pretty straightforward question. Just curious. Yeah. Um. Uh, I I know that there was a in uh, last time I checked there was uh, uh some uh, issues about you know using async uh in uh, UniFFI uh, community and there was some PR uh PRs addressing that so I I believe if it's not already there they're definitely working on it but again maybe Steve know might know better here St Steve do you know um, I haven't used the async capabilities. Um, maybe that needs to be part of another tutorial. Um, I do know they're working on uh, completion handling, and that's the code's been rolled into the database already for the next release. So hopefully uh, the future completion stuff is, um, is imminent. Yeah, they have some fixtures for async handling and Colin Swift, um, but I don't think they've officially released it yet because it's not in any of the docs uh, just yet, but it seems like soon. Okay, interesting. I would read a tutorial about async interfaces generated by uh, Unify, so I'd definitely be interested in that. Sweet, I got one reader. I'll get right on it. <laughs> I mean, that, Daniel's point is that's a pretty core part of what of what we're doing in Aries, and a, a pretty crucial feature is that that's the motivation for the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, when I when I looked at it, um, when I was um, working on one of the first things I was working on with Unify was Aries Ascar. And um, there's there's lots of the lots of those futures in there, and so what um, it, it caused me kind of an architectural introspection, if you will. Do the do the futures belong in the library or in how the library is called? And I I know we could debate that back and forth, and there's probably no right answer. Um, for for now, what I've been doing is putting that kind of stuff in in how the library is called versus in the library itself. But once that capability is, and the reason for that is how certain things are handled cross language, kind of matters. And so Kotlin or Swift or Java or whatever might have some nuances that are different than Rust, and so. Um, you know, how do they, when when you go cross language programming like that, part of what you need to keep in mind is how the differences um, synchronize. Um, and and so that's what I've done so far, but with, with these futures emerging from Unify, um, maybe that'll smooth all that out and it won't be an issue, but that's, that's where I've, um, done things before. The other thing that I've done is, well, let me just leave it at that. So I'm I'm following that. And as soon as that becomes GA from Unify, I plan to write a tutorial specifically on that. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Any other questions, comments? With that, we wrap up. Um, Sam is away for another week. Um, so I'll be back again next week. If anyone has topics they want to um, discuss, um, let me know. Otherwise, um, I will plan on uh, probably getting us back into issues related to um, transitioning, the community um, transition of uh, unqualified DIDs and some other Aries RFC things that are coming up. So um, sort of issues that are across the Aries community. Um, but um, welcome other topics. Just shoot me a note on Discord um, and let me know. And with that, I will wrap up this meeting. Thanks all for joining. And thanks especially, Patrick. Great presentation and the team with Aries VCX. Looks fantastic work. Have a good, have a good one.
Take thanks care. Great presentation. Thanks all.